So I probably look way different than what um, y'all are accustomed to seeing me look like in my videos. But um, this is kind of a video about the documentary that came out, um, the one that I was featured in, or was in, I don't want to say featured, um, the one that my really good friend Michelle made um, and did a phenomenal job with. Uh, I guess I never thought that those initial videos that I posted on YouTube like five or six years ago would actually go, go anywhere. Never thought. Um, my dad and I built, um, my, we built this guitar together and we painted it and we worked really closely with a, with a, a good friend of mine um, who runs a build your own guitar kit shop in Amherst, New Hampshire, where we're from. And I never thought that, you know, I would get an email from Pharaoh Vitale asking me to come to Chicago and be a part of this tribute concert. And I never thought I'd go out and I'd meet Michelle and I would, you know, be in a movie. Um, and I was 15 or 16 at the time. Yeah. 15 when I built the guitar. Six, yeah, yeah. I was like 15 or 16 at the time and never thought that as a 15 or 16 year old that like I'd be in a movie. Um, but here we are. The documentary just came out a few weeks ago and I'm sitting in my apartment in Chicago right now just thinking, oh my God, like it's real. And I guess, like, I want to say thank you. Um, I want to say thank you because without the people who watched those videos and without the people who were clearly drawn to the fact that, you know, a kid did this, um, I never would have been in the position that I'm in right now where, you know, I'm on TV, <laughs> like I'm, I'm in a movie about my favorite musician of all time that a good friend of mine who just so happens to be my favorite musician of all time's daughter put together this beautiful, touching, heartwarming story. And yeah, I, that's all I have to say. I have, all I have to say is thank you. Um, thank you so much <laughs> to everyone who watched those initial videos of me when I was 15 holding the guitar up and going through all of uh, all of the specifications. So a lot of people have questions about um, about the, the, the Terry caster that I built. Um, I've gotten a couple emails and a couple comments on my YouTube channel and a couple comments on some of my posts in the uh, Terry Cath fan group on, um, on Facebook that, uh, you know, oh, how'd you do this? What'd you, what was the process? Um, so I guess I'm going to go through that a little bit. I'm um, going to talk about some stuff. Uh, I don't think this video is going to be more, any more than 10 minutes. Um, everything, those initial videos will be linked down below, but here we go. So, um, I guess there are two really crucial uh, parts of um, the, the, the guitar. Uh, the first one being the fact that, you know, a traditional Telecaster has, you know, two pickups. It has two single coil pickups, one in the neck, one in the bridge. Um, and that Terry Kath configured his to have a humbucker, which is a Gibson style pickup um, containing two coils that buck the hum or are quiet. Uh, this is a, this results in a more thick, more rich, um, not muddy, but darker sound um, than the, your standard Telecaster neck pickup. Um, the second 
is the fact that it was in fact routed for a Stratocaster tremolo, which is something that had a lot of speculation around it until we saw the guitar in the documentary. Um, I, when I built mine, had mine done for that. Uh, since then, I've blocked it off. Like, I've put a little wood block in there. I don't use tremolos at all. Um, I had a jazz master for a while. I used it a little bit, but I just don't mess with them. Um, sometimes they're hard to keep in tune. I just don't mess with it. Um, but that's a very important part of it, too. So those are the two main parts. Uh, my guitar is not 100% yet. Um, I'm either going to continue to work on it or build another one. Um, Mine is signed by Michelle and actually signed by Paul Reed Smith as well. Um, has a lot of value to me sentimentally and I don't really want to do much to it. Um, I kind of want to keep it the way it is right now and maybe try to get a, to get another one. So uh, to get to build another one. Um, but mine to start from you know neck to body. Uh, mine has a maple neck with a maple fingerboard. Um, it's not a one-piece neck, it's actually a two-piece neck, which is kind of some nerd stuff, you know. If you want to build an exact, exact, exact replica of it, you need a one-piece neck with the skunk stripe on the back, um, like they were in the 50s and 60s and 70s and so on. Um, but it's a maple neck with a maple fingerboard. That's kind of really all that matters. Uh, the tuners are standard Clouson style. Tuners, they were what I could find, what I could afford at the time. Um, to my knowledge, Terry Katz has uh, has Schaller tuners, which are a little bit nicer, but just never got around to putting them on mine. When we get to the body, I think it's an alder body. It's either alder or ash, but I'm pretty sure it's alder body, Telecaster body, standard Standard fare. Routed for the neck humbucker, routed for the Stratocaster tremolo. Um, for parts, I used a Fender ashtray bridge that I just had cut uh, to accommodate for the new, the new, um, the new Stratocaster bridge, and uh, you know, standard control plate, standard one volume, one tone knob um, with a three-way switch to go from neck middle bridge, but it's very important that it's upside down. So instead of the switch being on top and the um, and the and the knobs being on the bottom, it's the opposite way, other way around. Um, I think it has a Lawler Telecaster pickup in the bridge that I added after I went to after the after the movie because when I was when it was featured in the movie I think it had a Fender Texas special pickup in there that I didn't like I didn't like the way that it sounded so I changed it out to something a little more vintage spec and a little bit more accurate to the sound um certainly you can use any Telecaster pickup that you like um but I think mine's I think mine's a Lawler and then in the neck it has a Gibson 57 classic that's been in there the whole time um Started with like a cheap no name pickup in the bridge and then went to the Fender Texas Special after I did some revisions to it, round one of revisions that I did before or when I found out I was going to Chicago for the movie. And then um, I've done a couple tweaks here and there, but nothing, nothing major. Um, it's finished in nitro. Nitrocellulose lacquer. I did a white base coat with a with like a cream blonde color and a clear coat on top. Don't do the white primer. Just don't. It doesn't wear well. It goes from like a nice off white to like a boom stark white before you hit wood. Doesn't look great. Um, once you because mine's pretty beaten up. I've I used it as my main guitar for like four years. Used it all throughout high school. Um, used it all over recordings that I've been on. I've used it for concerts, jazz bands, my bands, anything. I've used it my whole high school career. Didn't take it to college with me because it just means too much to me. 
but my whole high school career was on that guitar, so it's kind of beaten up. But don't do the white primer. Fender didn't do it. You don't need to do it. Um, I guess that's it for my my guitar. Uh, I've been very cool with people emailing me about um, questions they have. Uh, I personally have been doing luthery and guitar repair work for upwards of six years now. So if anyone local in the Chicago area is doing it and they need help, I'm always down to help. Um, but yeah, get in touch if you have any questions. I mean, a lot of people on the Facebook, the Terry Cass Facebook group as well have been building their own. Um, so we definitely have a lot of really cool uh, resources, a lot of really cool information. Um, the next one is, I guess, how to build one, if that makes sense. Um, so you could go the route that I went, which is uh, get a kit. You know, get a kit, get it. In my in my case, I did like a custom kit because uh, because um, I had it routed for the Stratocaster. But of course, if you're handy with a router and you have the right templates, um, DIY. Additionally, you can have someone professional do it, which I definitely recommend you do because routing a Stratocaster tremolo by yourself is not easy. And if you mess up the placement, you mess up the guitar for good. With that being said. Another really great place to start is actually a guitar that already exists. Um, it's the Fender Roadworn 50s Telecaster. Uh, you can get them for around $600 used, and I think they're about $800 new. You have five to six used, eight to a grand new. Um, get the blonde one with the black pickguard, because it has the maple neck, the blonde finish, and it's already worn, so it kind of already has that look. Um, that's a really good place to start, and then you can just take all of it off, use the body and use the neck, route it to the humbucker, route it for the Stratocaster tremolo, or don't. You could just as easily line up the holes on the Stratocaster bridge plate and use just that as um, as your bridge, and you no routing involved, and it'll look like it. It won't be exact, but it'll look like it. Then a little bit of rewiring here and there, and it's, you know, it's easily probably an afternoon project. <laughs> Honestly, because, you know, the guitar is already there. You don't have to paint it. You know, you don't have to do any of that. I mean, when I when I first did mine, I did had no idea how to build a guitar, and I've built three or four now, and I could, you know, I could build you a replica Telecaster, a Terry Gaff Telecaster in a couple days. You know, I just know how to do it. But painting's the, painting's the thing that takes the longest, because that took us about two or three weeks. You're also probably wondering about the stickers. Um, those were really hard to come by when I was building mine. Um, but since I've built mine, there have been a ton of people uploading the images and you can just save those images and print them on some sticky back paper and just stick them on your guitar and call it a day. Um, I kind of just wanted to leave mine off. I, I, I left it the way it was. It's just the way that I that I wanted to do it. Um, I've also spent a lot of time um, looking at pictures that have been provided by the documentary um, to Terry Cast's actual Telecaster. Based on what I've seen, I would put it maybe mid sixties. Uh, my reason being is because it has the Fender CBS Transition logo headstock or headstock logo, I should say. Um, which is a more blocky than the 50s ones, um, which I never paid attention to when I was building mine. Mine has a 50s one. Um, I put it mid-60s. Uh, so if you're a gear collector, if you um, you know love Terry Kath, love collecting gear, and you want to get that guitar, it's a mid-60s um, post-CBS Fender Telecaster. Post-CBS being, you know, CBS Corporation buying out Fender in the 1960s. Um, it's between a 64 and a 66 or 67 because uh, it still has the four bolt neck plate. Um, other than that, I mean, mid 60s Telecaster. Jeez, uh, I don't know. I don't really think I have much else to talk about. Um, this video is already five minutes longer than I wanted it to be. Uh, but 
Um, I hope that was some bio or uh, usable information. Um, I definitely hope when you look at this or when you watch this, um, some questions have been answered. I have provided my email before to people um, through YouTube, through Facebook, through Twitter. I'm more than happy to do that if you have any questions with your build. Um, yeah, honestly, just comment if you want my help, if you need some help, if you need some knowledge, if you have any questions, and I'd be happy to help you out. Um, I think that the recognition and the notoriety that um, not only this guitar is getting, but this artist is getting is absolutely breathtaking. Um, just within the past year, just within the past year that we've seen trailers and an actual release of this documentary, I've seen so many more people in the Facebook group, so many more people talking about this person being like, oh, I remember him. Even people that I hang around with at the local shops in, in um, Chicago, like, oh, we remember that guy. We remember that guy. We love that band, you know? So just kind of like the notoriety that this person is gaining through this project is absolutely phenomenal. And I am so, so, so happy that I could be a part of it. Um, I could be a part of it the way that I was. Um, and I'm honestly just surprised that my little project, you know, was that, you know, it was, it started as a school project. It started as a school, an independent study high school project and turned into something that actually means something to a lot more people or a lot, a lot, a lot more people than, you know, just me and my dad. So I hope you liked it. Um, feel free to check out those other videos. I'll link as many of them as I can below. Um, they're a little crude. They're pretty old, but what are you going to do? Thank you for the support. I love you guys and I will be in touch.